It's a special day. It's the first Sunday of June. Uh, we can enjoy God's presence and be in love and His grace. And uh, thank you guys for all the reading. Let God lead you this morning as we sing songs and praise to Him. Let Him just flow through you as we sing together in His holy name and His holy love. Guide us by our, Lord, we pray that you would guide us by your spirit, Lord Jesus. Guide us to sing a new song in your goodness and in your love, Lord God. In the holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.
says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm here waiting all around with grace to plug up all your mistakes to make you whole again. I'm here to pour my spirit out over you.
<laughs> All right, there you go. I got a Are you coming back? Yeah, you know, the children's church for Miss Lisa. Oh, it's time for children's church. Yeah. Oh, we are ready to go. Yay. Uh, and you're going are thank you going to Sunday school. Thank you all very oh, much. Oh, Lisa's going to be a teacher. Would you all like to do some pretty fun stuff? Go check it out for me. Go check it out for me. Miss Lisa's going to do something good for you. You want to come Come on. You want to come for summer school, we had 11 in attendance and $22.75 off. One of the things I wanted to read here to you. Can we take you? It says, you know, in this day and time in which we're living is his last days. The being mission Sunday, you think about what God has blessed us with and who we're supporting. It makes a big difference for those all over the world. But it says in uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 10, Love worketh no will in his nature, for, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. And that knowing the time is now at high time to wake up out of sleep, and now is our salvation here that we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. But I'd like to have some gentlemen come help me with the offering, please. Truck driving man. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this offering. Reach out and touch those who most of their mission, God, that we would bless them. The God that would lift in our hearts. Touch you and love you. It's all I give is in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's going to be the second Thursday of the month, and so we'll have our men's group on Thursday. <laughs> uh, so if you guys, if you're a man and you want to come, uh, this will be an opportunity for you just to come and we'll do a Bible study together, talking about being a man. Uh, it's fun. Uh, so make sure you guys come out. Um, and then also, I wanted to make sure we get out there that we're having our BBS here. It's going to be a big deal. So we have a lot of the people in the community working out, working with us, and so we because they're like, we have to do all the stuff for it. <laughs> Fortunately, there's a lot of volunteers already. Hopefully, we'll get more. But if you want to help out with our BBS, just let Sherry know. She's the one that's collecting all those things. So make sure you get, get a hold of her. Um, and uh, that's about, oh, I wanted to announce, too, that I tomorrow night I will be getting ordained with the Assemblies of God officially. Uh, so I'm excited about it. And uh, that's going to be up in a... Uh, small little town, <laughs> Red Oak. Uh, it's not that small, but uh, and uh, I'm just going to feel blessed to be there. So, uh, we'll, uh, if you were here for our morning Bible study, uh, Brother Kevin talked about we will be having a uh, a the North Texas leadership here getting together for a conference called Lead Conference. It's the June Council is what they used to call it, but now they call it Lead Conference. <laughs> And it's just a bunch of pastors getting together, so it's a really important moment. Uh, we just kind of discuss things and pray together, and uh, God really needs to work in our pastors, so we, we hope that's a, a blessing. So you guys keep us in our prayers. So I wanted to, uh, we're continuing our series today. I think that's all the announcements I had. Okay. Uh, we're continuing our series today, it's called worthy, and today we're going to talk about how may God make you worthy. That's the statement that I wanted to get to today, but before we get into that, I want to pray real quick, and then we'll, we'll jump right in. 
Lord God, I pray that you would just pour your spirit over us, Lord Jesus, that your presence and your love would just be evident here, Lord God, that we would know your grace and know your spirit. Lord, that everything that we do would be an example of, of the light that you've given to us, Lord Jesus, and that the power of your grace, Lord Jesus, would just be so evident within all of us, Lord God, that we would be able to proclaim and, and, and speak out in truth and love. Help us just to know you in a deeper and more intimate way, Lord God, to be closer to your spirit. In your holy name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, I've recently had spent more time training myself a little bit physically. I'm trying to, to drop some pounds. I think I've told you guys this, uh, if you've been here on Wednesdays, more so than on Sundays. Uh, but I guess I hadn't gotten uh, in a good rhythm since living here of exercise, uh, but I'm trying to get into that rhythm now. It turns out, you know, the occasional game of disc golf doesn't really keep you uh, in shape. <laughs> uh, or at least it's not the perfect exercise, right, for overall health. Anyways, this journey has brought me to back to a frequent response that I have to my bad health, which is I like to go running. <laughs> I like to enjoy jogging. And I've always enjoyed running for several reasons, but one which is the eventual, uh, so the one that is most important to me really is the eventual time of reflection that occurs during the run. This is like a tuning out of like all the worries of the day, and you're, you're jogging, you're energized. You know, I, like a lot of times I'll, I'll keep my times and I'm trying to push for a certain goal, but eventually there'll be a moment where I'm just reflective to God. Maybe I'll start preaching, maybe I'll start just getting mad about you know, things that are happening uh, that are evil in the spiritual realm. Um, but I'll have this moment of reflection and God will start to speak to me. It's, it's always a good time to do that because I set aside time when I'm exercising rhythmically, you know, there's just this constant. And, and in the midst of that, I pretty much always have some sort of time of reflection. Yes, I often find myself pushing really hard, but the truth is, is that that moment of reflection is, is always evident. And it is important to pause and reflect throughout certain times of our day. Not just null our souls with entertainment. We do that sometimes. We just leave it like, oh, I have some time. I'm going to pull out my phone and... Nowadays, it's zip through TikTok. But uh, when I was a teenager, it was like you go through like Facebook or uh, Instagram or something. Um, but uh, maybe when you guys were young, you had to actually go home and watch TV or listen to the radio. I have no idea. Uh, but we always try to find some way to entertain ourselves. But the truth is, we have to have moments of reflection where we just actually sit there and listen to God, even in the midst of an exercise or something rhythmically that we're doing, we can pause our mind and reflect on who God is. Look at what's around us. Because God speaks to us so much to us. Sorry, he speaks so much to us through nature. And I have a song up here I want to read real quick, uh, Psalms 104. And we're going to start at verse 10 and go to 14. And that's all that we're going to read. <laughs> uh, it says, You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give drink to each beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. Beside them, the birds of the heavens dwell. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for the man to cultivate, that, they, that he may bring forth food from the earth. So, we can notice so much about God in nature. God reveals the greatness of His grace to us in abundance and magnifies the joys of life if we only observe, if we only look around and see. I'm going to get back to that more in a bit, but um, we've been, like I said, been working through this series called Worthy. Today I want to look at specific passages. This is going to be our key passage for today. 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 through 12. And it says this. This is 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 through 12. 2, T-H, 1, 11 through 12. <laughs> to this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling, may fulfill every resolve for good, and every work of faith by his power, so that the name of the Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him, according to the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The first point I have today is that God makes us. God makes us. And that was dot, 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 dot. That was not there. No. God makes us. God is the designer of your life. Again, he created all existence. He started with the heaven and earth, uh, but then he got to humanity, right? The moments of our life are all within the, his creation, thus in his knowledge. He's the author of our faith, okay? God created all things. He makes us. But he also makes us do things. <laughs> in Hebrews 12, 2, it says... Verse 12, verse 2, sorry, chapter 12, verse 2. Jesus, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's what he's called, right? We cannot escape his reach. Every moment so beautiful must lay within God's understanding. It would be foolish to believe that something could happen so randomly. When we have to, we have so much reason to believe that, that an eternal being is at the design of it all. If we look at everything in nature, we start to see everything is designed. It's got a place. It's got a, a position. It's impossible for us to think, oh, well, maybe this thing happened randomly. I always think it's a foolish uh, um, person that goes, starts to become an atheist because they have decided to ignore the simple fact that everything is designed. Everything is happening around them in a perfect order that makes no sense for it to be random. He pl places you in a place that takes you into his grace. So God, God is controlling everything. He's made everything. He's placed us in our position. We own our path. We owe our path to God. God is the controller, right? So that our choice in free will and every design, I'm sorry, and free will is even designed by God. Our choices and our free will is designed by God. So he gives us free will, but the choices that we make, he's already like set them in order so that we can move forward in his way. He's designing our journey. He's placing things ahead of us. We make choices that God has already seen and given us a way, and he's already given us a way out of our failures. Before we could even know there was a way out, God provided a way. Salvation came a long time ago for us, right? The people that lived before that were anticipating salvation, but we've been living in it for almost over 2,000 years. We've been living in it. God's been moving within us. He's been giving us grace to see God as truth. So when, so when we see in past, this passage, it says that our God may make you worthy of his calling. We see that God makes us worthy. He's the one that makes us worthy. He's asking them to, to, to that he's going to be praying to God that if, if God would make them worthy of the call. Of the call. That's the hope. We see that God makes us worthy, right? So this is an option that to those that follow Christ daily, listen to the words of the Holy Spirit. Their direction is changed and they are made new. But this message that is worthy is still out of their control. It requires the Spirit. It's their choice, but it requires the Spirit. God has to move within our choices. So, I'm, I said I'd come back to me running again. And the reason I got to talking about running at the beginning of this is that I, um, this week I had injured my knee uh, early in the week not running. I, I realized later that I heard, injured it in a very complicated way, and that's not even really easy to explain. <laughs> I was lifting weights, and I don't know if I should pay, and I, I like pushed off weird because I was on my knees to pick up the weights. I don't know. I heard it, heard it in a weird way, but it wasn't from running, but then when I went running, all of a sudden I started to feel that pain. It was, I strained something in my knee. So the other day, I, I started to feel better, and I started, I was going to try going running again Thursday, either Thursday or Friday, I can't remember the day. Um, so I get up and I start running, it was like 5 something in the morning, 6 in the morning, and I started my run, and I immediately started feeling that pain, right? So I made the decision to make a run, <laughs> get out there, start feeling a little bit of pain, so I was like, I'm going to start walking, 
all of a sudden I see somebody behind me also walking, and I'm like, it's weird that we're walking at the same distance for a long period of time. So I'm going to start running again. <laughs> I get up and start running. I run. I was like, I'm going to run to the certain spot. I'm going to keep it in a light jog. And, and once I get there, that'll be the end of my running. So I run to the spot where there's like a fork in the track, the trail that I'm on. I get to the spot with the fork in the trail. I run there. I was like, I made it through without it, like feeling a lot of pain. And I look up and there's this fork. Usually I just go straight. And there's like a little left turn I could take that I don't normally take. I decided to take that turn. And I walk up. And I look up and I see the beautiful horizon. Or, uh, God, the sun was rising. It was red and purple. And, and I meant to show a picture of it to you guys. I took a bunch of pictures of it. But just, just over the grass, over the horizon, there was just trees and nothing else. Wide open beauty. I stopped and took that photo. But though I had made a decision to get to this place, I made several choices to get there. God had designed that moment. God had shown me something beautiful in the midst of me feeling a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Was it my choice, or did I align myself with what was already designed for me? Right? Isn't that good? Did, was it my choice to get to that position, or did I just align myself with what God had already planned for me? That's the question. And that's what... Um, I'm trying to ask here is that God, or I'm trying to tell you right now, is that God makes us, He gives us the opportunity to step into His path. No matter what choices we make, what failures we make, God is planning your journey back to Him. It's, you're going back to Him because, you know, you were born into a world that's full of sin. But salvation brings you the way back. Your spirit is transformed. I'll get more into that. The second thing, though, is that we take part in goodness. We take part in goodness. And take part in goodness and act in faith. So we take part in goodness, act in faith. Let's read our passage again. We're going to be like right at the middle of verse 11. It says, And God may, sorry, sorry, and He's saying, he's referring to God, so I added it in there. And God may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. And God may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. So, resolve for good. What is he talking about there? See, there's some versions say, uh, it's probably one that you have, maybe it's the same decision for good, for good or for goodness, desire for good or for goodness, or even good pleasure for his goodness. Basically, a plan or desire to do what God, uh, to do what is good. What we do our part, it is, it is fulfilled by the grace of God. We do our part, it is fulfilled by the grace of God. So we want to do good. We start acting, we start responding, saying, hey, I want this, was, I want to be a good person. The Spirit of God helps us get to that place. God makes a way for us to be good. This comes through the filling of the Spirit, seeing as goodness, in this case, is a fruit of the Spirit. We can do, we can try to do good, we can act good for a while, we can, we can put on that face, but if we aren't given the, the, the call, the, the position of goodness by the grace of God, we won't be good. So thus, the source of our goodness, like all things, is God. The source of our goodness, like all things, is God. If we set out to act good, it will be done by the will of God. Paul and his party are praying that the church seek and find success in being good. I want to read Proverbs 12, 28. And we're going to go to 13, 2 there. It's, it's not that long. <laughs> There's only one. 28 is the last verse of 12. And the path of righteousness is life. And, it, and, and in its path there is no death. A wise son hears the father's instructions, sorry, instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. From the fruit of his mouth, a man eats what is good, but the desire of the treacherous is violence. I love that. There, there is not, uh, it's not that the believer merely find goodness, 
in calling that God gives, but it's that God gives them in, in uh, the initial, sorry, not the initial idea of goodness and calling, but the, the, uh, the goodness that's going to carry on and last forever. See, it says the path of righteousness is life. The pathway there, it, that pathway there is no death. Right? So like the proverb, we are on a path towards life and not death. In Romans 7, 14 through 15, or 14 and 15, for it says, For we know the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin, for I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. And then he goes on in Romans 8, 1 and 2, and it says, There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus for, uh, from the law of sin and death. So we are given control over sin in the flesh through the spirit and power. Salvation from Christ allows for us to do what is right and be good. In the same way, this will bring action of faith. It will bring on an action of faith. We'll have to start believing and trusting in God and wanting Him in our lives. Desire to be good and find success within oneself and, and live out faith with power able to accomplish the purpose of calling that God has given us. That's what we're trying to do. We do not act on faith or goodness without the strength to do so from God. And when I was a, a Young little kid, <laughs> I'll say. Uh, I, I I got to, I competed in this. The or, you know you guys probably went through and had a science fair at your schools. So everybody have a science fair at some point. Maybe just me. <laughs> some of you guys are not. <laughs> and uh, we had it was a competition. Like everybody in school, cross grades would, would would have some sort of project and they have a display and they have to they have to interact and say, hey, this is what I did. I'm so excited. For two years in a row. I, I got a ribbon. First year I got first, first place, and the second year I got third place. I was a little bitter about that because <laughs> I didn't work on that one. Um, it was pretty special, though. I would usually come up with the project, the idea, um, start, start thinking about it. But honestly, often in a random way, or maybe it was a random desire to do a certain thing, or like, like one of them, I, I actually was des decided to study water pressure underwater uh, and its effect on oxygen, and, and I had this whole like theory, and really I just wanted to get in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a great experience, uh, great <laughs> experiment. <laughs> but the truth was that I couldn't not do accomplished what I did in my project without the help of some, pe some people. <laughs> my parents. Specifically my father. Uh, he was the one that would kind of help me flesh out uh, uh, or uh, uh, to, to get, come up with the idea, uh, make the idea work a little bit better. He'd help me like, understand, talk through how I was going to write out my hypothesis. And, and I would do all the writing and work, but he would always go back and like fix the grammar and do those things and build the project from. He would build like the the walls and things, and I would do the smaller parts of it. Right. We are not meant to find success on our own. We have a, we have our spiritual father, the father over all of us, guiding us, showing us how we can accomplish life. See, I was able to achieve a lot of things in, in the science fair because I, would, I had a father that was really, really willing to help. <laughs> and I remember, like, every time, like, I would have, like, a crowd at my, <laughs> my, my, my presentation because I had gotten help. I had had, it was really cool looking. But I needed the help of the father, my father. We all have a spiritual father that is out there guiding our pathway. He's helping us think through what our process is going to be in life. He's already given us a plan to accomplish our goals. 
He starts giving us those thoughts on how we can do certain things in ministry and, and, and live out our calling and live out our, our witness and our testimony. He's given us those things, and he helps us think about it. That's the whole purpose of having the, the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives, is we have a mediator, somebody that we can communicate, a way to communicate to God, to the Father. We have that option. So Paul's request here is that the people do just that. It is that they listen to God. And that God, either he's praying that God would just come, come over them and guide them and allow them to, to accomplish their goals, to allow them to live out the goodness that they were trying to seek out and allow them to act in faith the way that they wanted to act in faith. By, by, by power and authority, they would act out in faith. Do what God had planned for them. Do what God had laid before them. They have the authority because of the Spirit. Let's look at the third uh, point that I have today, and that is uh, let Christ be glorified in you. It is easy to not pretend to have faith. That's right. It is easy to pretend to have faith, right? For those who follow after Christ, walk in authority, and see Christ's glory manifested around them, but some people can come into a church or, 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 or they can like, say enough words to pretend at the grocery store that they're a Christian, but they won't go to church all the time. They won't be involved with very much. They're really living in the spirit for the dark life. But if we're really truly followers of Christ, we start to see something within people, a manifestation of God's glory. We, we get to join in the glorious purpose that Christ has given us. We align ourselves with God, with the uh, the Father through Jesus Christ, just as Jesus Christ had aligned himself while he was on earth. So the pathway is uh, of Christ's example to us. And I, I say this all the time, that Christ is our example. He's the purpose. Uh, he's he's the, the way we can, we can follow our, our faith as we just look to Christ. Christ is our example to us, and that we can follow the same pathway that God has created us uh, since the beginning. He's already designed it for us. So, I'm going to read three passages in John. It's all out of John 17, starting at verse 1. It says, When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. And then we skip forward uh, to the verse 10 and 11. It says, All Mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but, there are, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Then we skip forward a little bit more to verses 21 through 23. It says, that they may be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and in you, that they are, may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. We do not have the ability to glorify Christ through the flesh, but the grace of God by the grace of God, we, we, can, we can through the spiritual transformation that comes with salvation. We get to see the glory of God. And the glory of Christ is living within us by the power of his name. We live out uh, uh, the, the presence of God. We walk in, 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 in with fire and anointing to speak out the truth that God has given to us. We are completely made new and able to abide in the presence of God. So that if we are to endure... We are to continue on in our faith. We should do it only by the ability given to us by God. So God designs it. He gives us the opportunity to walk in faith and to grow in Him. I want to read one more passage here. and then I'm going to pray and we're going to, uh, I'm going to dismiss. But, and this is Isaiah 66, 5. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at His word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out by the names for, for my name's sake, said, The Lord be glorified, but they shall appear to you, but he shall appear to your joy. 
and they shall be ashamed. We, are, we can only glorify God by the grace of God. Right? He's, he's set in stone the opportunity for us to do that, and it's through salvation. We call on God, we learn how to be with God, and we trust in Him. The goal of the message today was, is, is of the title, May God Make You Worthy. We, we have to respond to what God has placed before us. He's given us the opportunity to walk into His path, to walk in His grace, to walk in His love, and to seek out His truth. It's so simple. We just have to listen to what He's saying. We have to look to the Word of God, look to His truth, and walk in it. The more we look into His truth, the more we look at what He's placed before us, the more we, we recognize the moments in our life when God has placed something so beautiful and wonderful, like the pictures I was taking. I have them on the phone if you want to see them later. God, is, uh, God shows us these wonderful things because He's always there. He's always guiding us. We don't just, like I said earlier, we don't just um, make our choices, we align ourselves with what God has placed before us, the path that he's given to us. Uh, I love Paul's prayer here with, um, to the Thessalonians because he's asking God to, he's asking God to do something over them so that they would be complete, they would find their final journey. It wasn't just about that moment. You could tell by the way he was writing. Even though he used the word calling, which is like your normal verse, initial calling in life, uh, he, he's talking about the future. Like, you're going to continue on in the calling to be found worthy. We can look to this passage and see that Paul is asking God, praying over them, to see them find the end, just get to the end of the course. Find their final journey. And I, I want to pray that over you, that God will just guide you to a completion of your course, to the end of your journey. I'm not talking about soon, y'all. <laughs> Please, no. I need you here. <laughs> but that God will just continue to push you forward throughout your journey further and further in life. Isn't it wonderful to know that God is guiding us, that he's placing things before us, and he's leading us to his truth and his love. So I want to pray. Everybody bow your heads real quick. We're going to pray together. Lord, I pray that you would just anoint us, Lord Jesus. Help us to, to every desire that we have for good, to find it accomplished. Every action we have in faith, to find it accomplished. Whether it be in the immediate or down the line, help us see through everything that you've promised to us. As we look into Scripture, Lord, help us just to seek out, Lord God, ways to understand what you're calling us to do. To understand what you've placed before us, the witness that you've given to us. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just pour your blessings over everybody here, that all would see you and find your love and know your grace. Lord, we pray that your power would just overwhelm us in a deeper and more intimate way, even more so now than ever. That your fire would just flow through us, Lord Jesus, and that, that this nation, this town, everywhere we, we see, Lord God, would be just a conquest of your love. That your spirit would, would be bringing truth over those, those that have fallen away, those that have chosen to walk away. We pray, Lord God, that your spirit would guide us. Help us just to spread your love and your light throughout the whole world. To answer the commission, to answer the promise, the decision that you gave, given to us, Lord God, to, to go out, to be, to be people of God, to be people led by your spirit. Lord, do it by the power of your name, Lord God. In your holy name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to open up the altar uh, if you can, for just a couple of minutes. If you guys need prayer for healing or, or uh, prayer for some, some of the need in your life, I'm, I don't want to not give you an opportunity to come down to the altar. Yeah. So please come down and we'll pray through things together.